Welcome to the show. This is Club Corby for Wednesday the 6th of May 2020. And I hope you're doing well on this sunny spring afternoon where none of us can leave the house. <laughs> You may leave the house for 30 minutes of exercise or for essential activities and that is all. At least that's the, that's the line where, I, where, uh, where I'm at. That's what we're told. And frankly, I ain't even leaving the house for that. I ain't risking it. Anyway. What are we doing today? Today we are going to be inking page 9 and for uh, viewers who watched the previous stream where we penciled this image you'll remember that it was undersized uh, and so what's happened is I scanned it today and uh, blew it up by about 25% or so so now it's a decent size for inking I'm happy to say so what we're going to be doing today is uh, we'll ink this page and I think tomorrow we'll be doing page 10 and that'll be the last in this series. Of strips I mean, not of Club Kirby, we'll keep going, we'll find some other things to do. We've still got lettering and things to do after that, so you know, let's uh, not waste any time. I've got my pens here. I have my filthy, filthy rulers uh, that I really should clean. I've got my underwhelming energy drink. I don't think you can see this. Wow! Focus! Mm. It's very underwhelming. I don't recommend it. I'm only drinking it because I don't have my Red Bull. There's no sugar free Red Bull in the house and you know that's my favourite but make two but this uh, Wow Focus I bought a couple of cans of that very watery very sort of weak do not recommend, I do not uh, like it. And now I'm stuck with it for at least two or three days because I've got two or three cans of this stuff. Now I've got to drink it. We don't know, I mean, my, uh, this is how bad my, uh, need for my Red Bull is, I, I get Red Bull by the case, I have it, uh, on Amazon subscribe and save, so every month, they send me a case of it, and I, did, I only drink one can a day, I have one can with my lunch. Uh, usually right before we do the stream. So I'm not sitting here guzzling tons of cans of Red Bull every day. Don't, don't worry, but... It's, but Red Bull's expensive, you see, so it's much more cost effective to buy a case of it. Otherwise, you know, if you're paying whatever is £1.50 a can or whatever it is to buy it, just a single can. You'd buy a, a case, get like 24 cans. And that'll get, for me, that'll get me most of the way through the month. And then of course, uh, there'll always be that uh, last week of the month where it's like, uh, look, I have a contingency plan. What am I going to do when it runs out?
And I don't have a lot of vices, but... Red Bull, I guess, is one of them. And I don't know how I could make comics without it. So I kind of became a connoisseur of energy drinks and I can tell you that most of the other ones not great, not great. Anyway, we're talking a lot about energy drinks instead of making comics on this stream, but like I said, uh, for me it's an integral part of the process. Anyway, what are we doing today? This is an unusual page because usually we use a four panel firmware and as I said when we were illustrating it, uh, this one is basically first panel, second panel, and then the second panel is going to be when you swipe to view the next one, it takes you over and it's going to be the second part of the image, so it's like one big long panning image that sort of works as two separate ones. And then the fourth one is this one of uh, Ernest teleporting Morgan and Corby away. So, uh, yeah, as we discussed in um, ruining this line here. As we discussed in the penciling video for this uh, page, I have to change up the templates, which resulted in the art being a bit undersized. And in one of my lazier moments, instead of going back and just reprinting the template, I just said, screw it. We'll pencil it at the smaller size. But, I also said, when we ink it, I'll correct that and I'll blow it back up to the correct size, which is what I've done. It's been an interesting journey to do this uh, series of daily comic strips so far, as opposed to the traditional comic book format, because Uh, you know, we have certain restrictions here in terms of every panel is a very fixed size. We have to work within these confines. But I suspect that it might actually be good for me because it sort of uh, forces me to, you know, keep every panel to a minimum. I've only got so much real estate to work with. So I have to be very conservative about what elements are going to go into each panel. I just really push myself to think about how everything is going to work. And I don't know yet 
what is going to happen in terms of if we do future stories you know in this format instead of you know uh, full-length comic book stories how that's going to affect the direction that the story takes and sort of the pacing of the stories will certainly be very interesting if that's the way that we end up going Really coming in a little tiny detail here, even though, like I said, uh, we ended up blowing this page up. Which you'd think would help in terms of uh, fitting in that uh, additional detail. Still, kind of have to uh, work to set it all in and really kind of messed up bit of uh, Morgan's face there. By the way, the page that we did before this on uh, yesterday's stream. Oh, I was up until 2 in the morning finishing off that page last night. See, this is why I need that Red Bull. But, uh, yeah, I really pushed hard to get that page done. And it has uh, quite a few errors on it actually, I wasn't really pleased with it. But, you know, as I often talk about, you can't really afford to be too much of a perfectionist with this kind of thing, you just have to face on. And know that you're going to be able to make corrections later.
quite frankly, you know, if you get to the point where you're inking at two in the morning, you are going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. But I really want to make sure that I got that page done. We could start fresh today with a new page, you know, and I don't want us to get further behind. I work far too hard on a comic that, uh, that I don't even get paid for, you know, it's like, uh, as I often say, in the time that I've been doing Kirby, you know, there have been points where I say, I would say to myself, I've legitimately worked harder on this comic. I give away for free than I have on, you know, any paid job that I've ever had in my life. But I feel very strongly about this project, even though I have times when I get very discouraged about it and you know, I get upset at the fact that it hasn't gone as well as I wanted to, but I always end up coming back to the fact that I feel like nobody's a bigger fan of uh, of Kirby than I am, and I kind of have to be like, uh, you have to have a lot of faith when you're taking on a project of this kind of size and scope. Like, you have to be the number one fan and, you know, be uh, willing to you know, go out there and be a booster for it and have faith in it, even if you don't have faith in yourself and your ability to do the work, which is how I often feel. I really, I really uh, like the series, even if they often think, you know, it would be better off in someone else's hands, someone who could do a better job of it than I could.
I say I'm excited about you know, the fact that uh, we're almost done here with this series of 10 you know, initial sort of daily strips this sort of story arc and uh, just sharpen that up a bit it feels really good to have a project even if it's just sort of like a mini project like this that even if it's dragged out a bit it hasn't taken months and months like uh, each of the individual issues of Kirby has we can get these done and get them turned around and just be able to have a sense of completion for once that something was finished in the space of a couple of weeks instead of a couple of months. I don't know when these strips are ever going to see the light of day in terms of when they're going to go online. But at least we know that they're done. Wait, I just realized something. There's a minor, uh, sort of a potential continuity error here. And I'll show you what it is. I can find. This isn't uh, the last inked page, but it is the pencil page that precedes this, where Karen had taken off her helmet and was holding it when she talks to Ernest and she's holding it. And then she has it back on again. Ah. I mean, it's not impossible that she could have put it back on, I suppose. Wait, how did this play out in the original issue? Because of course we're just retelling the events from issue three here. Or issue four I should say. Let me go look it up. Okay, I'll bring it up on screen so everyone can watch along. Right, here we go. Back to issue four. So yeah, of course, I know that Karen did have her helmet off in the actual storyline. 
and in the shape of the outline she didn't put it back on but <sighs> I don't know it, it's, it's a minor thing okay what we might do is uh, I might need to go that I might go in at some point and just uh, do an edit on it take the helmet off For now, for the purposes of this stream, I assume that it's uh, a vetcon that she put it back on. Oh, put it back on. I'm actually kind of concerned that what's going to happen is I'll get to the point where this comic's completed and I will have forgotten. To make that uh, correction. So what I'm going to do is Right here, can't ever with helmet. There we go. And if after all that, and even going to the trouble of getting it down, somehow it makes it through. To the final stage and it ends up online and she's still wearing the helmet you all have permission to write in the comments oh, excuse me but I believe Karen took off her helmet and I'll say well sported You must have been watching Club Kirby when I realised that. And I told you to call me out on it. Oh, I bet John didn't have his red ball that day. No, I didn't, did I? I had my now focus and it didn't help me focus any okay to be fair I drew that weeks ago I'm only inking it now so it's not entirely uh, you know a, a, a fault that, that occurred today That's not even the first time that's happened either. Uh, in fact, I believe the very first time we see Karen take the helmet off 
Well, no, it wasn't really the first time, but then after the, in the scene after in issue three, when she lands in the uh, the river, and she almost drowns, and then she uh, gets out and uh, takes the helmet off. I think I drew the, uh, then uh, drew it with the helmet, drew with the helmet back on, and I wasn't supposed to. So it's happened at least a couple of times. You get very used to illustrating the same character the same way over and over again, and when the design changes, even just briefly. You're so uh, the the routine is so ingrained that you make mistakes. Speaking of which, there's a little error there. I drew the line of the hair into the sort of the headdress thing that Ern was wears. Start to just very lightly so turn some of the strands of the of Ernest's hair I think. And again this is the very thinnest pin I have. So not really ideally suited to this. So we're not gonna do the whole whole piece like this. Just going to select a couple of lines and just sort of start with that as like a base. Then we'll go up a pen size. lightly kind of like that just 
saying to make sure that we don't uh, pull the pen into any areas that we're not trying to draw over. But keeping it kind of free and easy. And before I go on and uh, add the rest of the shadow, we're basically going to keep adding layers to that until we get to the point where we're just adding thick black spots on the back of the hair where most of that is just going to be completely cast in shadow. But uh, before we do that even, I'm going to take a medium pen to fill in the outer lines here of the character as we have done on previous streams I've talked about it we can give especially if you're looking at the character who's closest to us as the reader I almost said the viewer, which I guess also sort of applies, but as the reader we're looking at the character who's closest to us and we're, they have a thicker outline. It just really pops and helps to make the image feel A bit more three-dimensional, and uh, gives it a nice uh, sense of impact. And as I've also said before, it gives it some visual interest, uh, which is very stimulating to the eye. And quite pleasant to look at. You get this mixture of thick and thin lines, uh, and that looks really good instead of just having the same sort of very thin line weights. That's very drab and not very exciting. And also, we get a good mixture of light and dark in every panel. It's one of the reasons why I like to just pick out elements of the background and just, you know, add spot black areas. And You know, it makes uh, the whole panel look a whole lot better. Um, right. We'll take this. Oh, yeah, we're not done here because... To finish filling that out, I think we could... Let's get that to taper a little bit as well. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start to add in some even thicker lines here like that. The darker parts. Mostly down this side where the shadow's going to start to really come through. Right, even add a little bit there, just sort of like a little light spot there, I think. But are you ready to play with fire? What we're going to do now is because the shadow is mostly here, so we're going to start to. And some strokes like that. Almost this whole area here is going to be covered in shadow. This is this is the, the point where I start to feel like uh, 
Oh, it's really dangerous. You're always worried that you're going to just go too far and mess something up. And to be fair, that it's just a little bit more like that. I don't care if we go over the panel here. You know, I always say that. But it's true. The main thing is, if there's areas that need to be protected, just be careful. Leave those blank. Well, wow, look at that. What a difference that's made already. And then we can go away. We'll take the medium pen. We might even leave a little bit of rim lighting there, just around the edge. Just a little bit. But we're going to go up into the head to this. And we'll leave it. Uh, we won't share that part of the image. Now, in a realistic setting, the back of the headdress would shade that in as well because the shadow would hit there, right? It would, uh, objects like that wouldn't be, uh, above the sort of laws of light and shadow it would work the same way however this is still a superhero comic and it's somewhat cartoony so we are allowed to take a few artistic liberties just to make sure that as I always say Everything is very clear for the reader's benefit and they can see those little details. It's kind of not in our best interest for the whole the whole half of the page to just be one big uh, sort of black blob. We're trying to retain some of the detail. Uh, we'll go in and we'll add some shading to the arm as well. Maybe not quite so much. Just like so. Okay, I'm going to do this in the first because I'm going to start with the darkest parts. Maybe we'll add a little bit of uh, some lighter strokes just to show that peeling out just a few. And we'll add a little bit of detail into the collar as well. And we'll start to add a little bit of detail to the staff as well. Well, that looks alright, but I would like to 
checking up the lines of the staff just to at least on that side, maybe just on the left side Looking it up a bit. And I'm quite happy with that. That uh, is going to look very nice, I think, and it's really going to be a very impressive sort of first panel in this particular page. Once we add in uh, the black from Morgan and the black on Kirby side as well, and that's going to help even more. So it was a risky venture. Anytime you start using the very thick black pens, you have to be very careful. Uh, especially if you start doing the sort of the, you know, the strokes and dashes, and you're trying to get it to integrate with the lighter uh, strokes, but. You know, sometimes things actually go well. Not often, but sometimes. kind of makes it worse actually to have a really good result like that and know that you're still going to have to go in and redo a big chunk of the image because one character is dressed incorrectly but there you go, you got to take the good with the bad or the bad with the good if you will I think I'm actually going to omit the usual tiny little details of Kirby's armour because they're not going to show up very well at this size anyway. I'll ink the helmet even though as we've discussed I have no intention of using it
Uh, let, let's go on a wall ink. Which one we do pen? There it goes. Well, ink uh, Morgan's device. Next. This pen will work. Take a while to get going there. I'm pretty much going to use the same sort of trick here where we're going to have kind of an outer uh, section there where the lines are very light and then we're going to start to add in some medium strokes under the, well, under the, sort of the floofy part of the dress at the top we will add a little bit more shadow we'll start to add in sort of like a protective area by filling the majority of the uh, what we'll do, what we're going to do is we're going to take the outline and just like create a safe buffer area here like that, and then we can unleash our SB pen again, our secret weapon. I actually think uh, it's going to work better if we thicken it up a little bit like that. And then again, just want to have that. a little bit and then we got to go back to the medium pen because this bit here is a bit of a mess
don't have a lot of background detail here. Oh, I have a little bit of shading under here. Just to show that uh, the characters are standing on a different plane than what's going on in the background. There I see it. I think this is about done. There I said it. This panel I mean. I think it's about done, obviously. <laughs> There's a lot more to do here. Oh, it's getting dark in here. Logically speaking, we should go on and do panels 2 and 3 next. So I think that's what we'll do. Yeah, excuse me, but I'll take a sip of this. Uh, somewhat lacking energy drink. Feeling it.
I'm really not uh, very happy with with uh, Neiman's proportions on this panel and she suffers from what I call uh, lollipop head syndrome which is something that a lot of my characters used to uh, display a lot where if I have to do something at a very small scale uh, in order to accommodate their features, their facial features, the head seems to just become disproportionately large when I'm doing them at a small scale. And I fear that that has stuck again here. Because what we could do is just divide the head as it is, or ink the head as it is, and then scale it down in post production. To be honest with you, that is probably the safest bet. If we start trying to uh, correct it on the fly here, there's a good chance that uh, I'm just going to make things worse. Oh, we're going to have to make a lot of corrections on this page <laughs> once I get scanned. That's going to be a long stream. We might do four hours that day. Arms are very long as well. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna start to try in some of this uh, throne details well just to keep those areas separate. Uh, I'm really not happy with it. As you'll recall, as we spoke about earlier, of course, we penciled this page at uh, a much smaller scale than usual. Uh, my suspicion is, looking at this, what happened is that's why this uh, sort of uh, the wonky proportions here have occurred is because we were trying, I, I, we, I was trying to get in there, put a lot of detail into a very small space 
and so we ended up with a head that's just not quite correct as a result but it is uh, at the very least a little bit of model
This is almost uh, break it the magnifying glass kind of uh, stuff we're doing here. in terms of uh, really getting in there and getting that kind of tiny detail on. Okay. It always feels like there's an immense amount of uh, pressure whenever you are drawing a character at that kind of tiny scale and you want to make sure that you get all of the details right and uh, not mess up, and, and uh, I should say inking it, I mean drawing it is bad enough at least when you draw something, if you get it wrong you can erase it if you ink it when you're inking the pressure is really on to try, to try and do as good a job as you can and not mess up So, Maka turned out pretty well. Neem here, on the other hand, I think is a bit of a lost cause. I don't think there's much we can do at this point to get her up to scratch. I think it's going to have to wait until we scan the image and then we can mess about with the proportions and Fix up the arms, fix up the size of the head and to mend some of the little tiny details there.
And I'm not really feeling the uh, shape of the staff here. It doesn't seem to have come out quite right. Honestly, that's just, that's the uh, sort of uh, thing where I'm quite likely to uh, edit that and post as well. Okay, uh, let's take a break from doing the character art for a little bit, I think, and we'll start to add in some of the background details, just to break things up a little bit.
Okay. Um. Let's see if I just still see a little spots even after you've applied the uh, you know, the sort of uh, black areas. There's still uh, a little specks in them. I need to go back and uh, correct them. A lot of that stuff isn't going to uh, be visible, so once uh, Let's so just kind of do everything in and you know, once it's replicated at a small scale in the final web ready version of the strip, I'm sure a lot of that detail is going to get washed out anyway.
this is uh, turning out to be very irritating panel to uh, to ink just because of the many different sort of elements that there are to juggle here in terms of background elements, character elements, foreground elements uh, and just uh, making sure we do everything right. You would think it would be easy that the hard stuff we figure out when we're penciling And that's true to some extent, I mean. The only difficult stuff is figuring out sort of the logistics of where everything is going to go, but it can still be very frustrating and very uh, very tiring. to go over everything just one little piece at a time. Takes a bit of focus and a bit of concentration. We want to make sure that we do everything right, or at least to the best of our ability. Once in a while, when I am inking, I'll come across a, a section of the image where I can spot an error and I have to try and correct it. This pillar that's behind Maka here was the wrong shape and size and really didn't seem consistent with the other pillars, which I'm sure. Was a mistake that I made at the penciling stage. So, having to just try and sort of improvise it and fix it up on the fly here. There's some things when you're inking that you can fix, and some things you just have to ink it as it is and resist the urge to meddle
I think we can start to add in some uh, black here, some shaded areas. And that is going to cover up a multitude of sins as far as uh, elements of these backgrounds that aren't actually that great. So thank goodness for shadows. These shadows don't only look cool and dramatic. And as I've said very often, you know, give your art a lot of uh, increased visual impact. But we can also use them to cover up huge sections of the image and make our lives a lot easier. There's no better feeling when you're inking, I think, than when you get to the point where you're, uh, you're liberally applying large sections of uh, just black shadow and you realise that yeah, maybe there's a part of the image that you're not very happy with or that you messed up slightly and you realise, oh hey, I could just devour right over that, I could just go over it with black and save the piece or at least make it a bit better. Um, what I'm going to do is add a second line down there so we can Split this off. Just to keep in some sort of defining white areas, just to maintain a bit of a definition and image. I've got to be very careful there because I don't want to ink big sections of the image that are going to overlap with the uh, core beast character art, which I haven't actually started yet. We are 
as I can black areas I will drop a little bit into the black section of Maka's outfit as well which is I figure an easy task where we run out the clock because we've only got a couple of minutes left on today's show As always, I want to thank everybody who's watched the stream today, whether you are viewing on Twitch or on YouTube. It, uh, it all helps. In terms of getting eyeballs on the on the show, I hope that you'll consider subscribing on YouTube if you're not already subscribed, or following on Twitch. And for this, I've just got some messy bits and pieces to it, but okay, well this on regardless. I think my gloves are a bit due for a clean, I might put these in the wash before our our next stream tomorrow. Uh, so what have we got done today? So we've got the first panel that's pretty much done. Like I said we've got a bit of a continuity error there to fix. So basically we have a continuity error to fix on each of these panels because Corby's wearing the helmet in each of them, even in this one where she's being teleported, so okay uh, them's the breaks really uh, the second panel is about 60% done I would say we've still got Corby and Morgan to do we've got a bit of shading to do I'd say it's a bit, if I was to put a number on it I'd say about 60% complete uh, and the third panel of course, which is actually the fourth panel because this is two the fourth panel, we haven't even started on that one yet, so I've got a bit of work ahead of me for the rest of the day to get this done. Hopefully I will not be up until <laughs> 2 in the morning preaching to get this completed. To be fair, I had some other things I had to take care of yesterday as well that sort of uh, pushed uh, the rest of my inking for the day. Uh, ahead of schedule but I uh, pushed it into the wee hours of the morning but we're almost done we've got a little bit of inking to do on this tomorrow I imagine we will be inking page 10 the final one in this series that recaps the story of Kirby so far uh, so we'll be back tomorrow at 2 p.m. UK time. We've done pretty well in terms of uh, maintaining a schedule, I think, uh, recently. I think we're getting into the habit of it. And that uh, new head shoulder is really bugging me. Oh, so much work to do, so many corrections to do. There's still a lot of work to do before these uh, 10 daily strips go online and uh, are, you know, ready to go. But, until then, I want to thank all of you uh, for watching and continuing to support uh, Club Kirby. And we will return tomorrow uh, 